All right, hello. Welcome to HTML and web design. I'm going to, I'm going to share my screen in a second. Um, I just want to give you some background of what you can expect in this course. This course is about web development and web development from the standpoint of coding. So we're going to do a lot of coding in this course. Uh, basically HTML coding and CSS. Now, some of you might have experience, you know, with some coding. Some of you may have zero experience. Well, it doesn't matter. Uh, the whole point of this course is to show you from the ground up, from, you know, knowing zero code up to, you know, the point where you can develop, you know, simple to complex websites. All right. So we're going to do CS, uh, a lot of HTML coding and CSS, right? And, you know, I'm going to share my screen. We're going to work on the code together. And then you're going to, you know, gradually get comfortable with understanding the different tags we have in HTML, all the different types of syntax, you know, how you arrange the code and make it um, appear on the website like you want it to be, you know, with images, pictures, different colors, different fonts, um, you know, to create a very standard looking website. All right, so let me go ahead and share my screen now, and then we can get into uh, the course. Like I said, it's a lot of demonstration, and so, you know, not a lot of just lectures, but demonstration. So let me share my screen and The first thing you're going to need, obviously, is your web browser. Um, I use Firefox a lot. You're free to use Chrome, um, you know, Firefox, Microsoft Edge. Any of those are fine, but I always use Firefox. So for consistency, uh, you might want to use Firefox because, you know, some of the tools might be different from what you see in Chrome or in Microsoft Edge, all right? So if you don't have Firefox downloaded, good idea to download it. If you want to stay with Chrome, it's fine too. So you need your web browser. Um, your web browser is how your code or is where your code is going to be displayed. So two things, so your web browser and your code editor, right? So this code editor I have here is Edit Plus, right? Basically, uh, you can use any code editor you like. The job of a code editor is based where you type the code, all right? So if I go here to File New and I click on New HTML Page, uh, it's going to give me some default uh, code here. I'm just going to get rid of it because we're starting from scratch. So I'm going to show you how everything works and what the codes mean. But your code editor basically is where you type code. So if I type uh, just this piece of code, now HTML, and I type a HTML, what we call a HTML closing tag, all right? Those are tags. So your code editor um, is going to help you, or rather is where you need to type code, right? Where you're going to type your code um, when you're trying to build a website. Um, Windows has a default um, Notepad program right here, Notepad. And it's the same thing, right? I can type HTML, oh, HTML, and I can type the closing tag, uh, HTML. But well, that's the closing tag. I will explain all that uh, as we go along, but just to give you some background about your code editor. So Notepad is a code editor. Uh, what I have here, Edit Plus is a code editor. There's so many of it you can find uh, when you go online for free. You probably don't need to buy any. Uh, if you're on a Mac, uh, a Mac might have a text edit, I think, or you can go and download. So let's go here and let's do a search um, of, you know, say text editors. 
um, you know, that are available there for uh, maybe for Windows. So you have all these different text editors here. You have brackets, you have Notepad++, more advanced than this, you know, Microsoft uh, Windows Notepad here. So Notepad++, TextMate. And if you want it uh, for Mac, for the Mac, uh, your Mac computer, just do a search for uh, something like that, and you're going to see some options here. So a lot of students use brackets, um, use text wrangler. Look for something that works for you. The important thing to look out for, like you see in this um, screenshot here, uh, this screenshot here, your code editor should have color codes, right? Should be color coded. Like what I showed you here before I deleted everything on my screen, uh, color codes. So some parts of your code is going to be in a different color. Uh, like here, you see blue, you see some red, some like pink or purple, something like that, right? Very helpful. Different code editors have different color combinations, but that's why I recommend, or that's why I don't recommend using the notepad that comes with your Microsoft um, computer, your Windows computer, sorry because it's all just black and white, just black and white. And when you start to have a lot of code, well, black and white is going to be hard to deal with. And also when you're typing your code, you want to be able to undo when you make a mistake. For example, let's say I, you know, kind of, if I delete this part here, delete this part here, delete this here, delete this here, delete this here, delete this here. I've deleted, I've deleted like five or six lines. Now I can go to uh, undo here, the undo option, undo. I can undo everything I did. You see that I keep going undo, undo. I undo everything I did, right? In fact, I can also redo everything I did, like go to redo here. It's like I can reverse my steps, okay? Now, with, with, with this notepad here, you can only undo once. That sounds crazy, but you can only undo once, right? So let's say I have a bunch, let's just say I do something like, you know, one, two, three, four, five, okay? Um, now let's say I, I delete two, I delete three, I delete five. Now, if I go to undo, say undo, right? I go back to undo. It doesn't undo any, it just undo, it just does the undo. <laughs> It'd be confusing to say, right? The undo action is only, only happens once. So it doesn't take me back to all the other numbers that I deleted. So, so even though you can type your code with this um, notepad on Windows, it has quite a lot of disadvantages, right? So. I don't recommend it. I'm just going to close it out here. So like I said, look for a text editor that works for you, right? And once you have it downloaded, a lot of them, even if there's a cost, for example, this particular um, Edit Plus, uh, let's see, Edit Plus. All right, so Edit Plus, yeah, they used to be, they used to have free trials and stuff like that, but I don't think this particular one is free anymore. I've had this like a long time. So maybe you want to use, um, you know, one of the other ones that I recommend, that I, you know, you know, search for here. And, you know, they work literally the same way, all right? You might have a couple of options that are, in different places, but for the most part, they all work, uh, you know, very similar. Okay. So once you're all set with your text editor, I'm just going to delete everything I have here, and with your, you know, Firefox or Chrome, let's get into what this course is really about. Like I said, um, there's 
the bottom line of web design always starts with code. So let's, 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 let me show you something here, right? So I'm just going to go to, let me close this. I'm going to go to, we're going to use, we're going to do a lot of searching online, right? Um, I mean, we can have downloaded files, but sometimes it just takes too much time. So we're going to do a lot of searching, a lot of, you know, text, a lot of links, a lot of pictures, a lot of resources that we use are all online, right? So you're going to see me searching a lot online. Now you can also do the same when we need to find pictures or we need to get examples, all right? So you've got to be comfortable with that. So let's go to um, Amazon here. And basically what I'm looking for here is I'm just going to, let's just look for like, let me maximize the page. Just a blank area of the screen here, right? Um, now go to view page source, view page source, right? Uh, let me zoom out on what I have here. Okay. So I'm going to zoom in again. Uh, zoom in is control plus plus on your keyboard. Just hit control plus plus and to, so that's to zoom in. To zoom out is control minus minus. All right. So to zoom in again on some of this code. Now, some of this code here, especially if you're doing this for the first time, you're in a HTML class for the first time, some of this code is going to make no sense to you, like zero sense. But behind every website, um, Amazon, YouTube, Facebook, um, you know, the school's website, if you go to the page source, you're going to see, and just scroll down, right? You're going to see all kinds of things that are basically codes, right? Uh, let me scroll down a lot on this Amazon page. Uh, so you can scroll down on this Amazon page. Uh, you, here, for example, you see the title, right? You see this tag, the title tag here, and there's a title tag here, right? It says Amazon.com, spend less, smile more. Now, like I said, we're going to explain all these things as we keep going, but if you notice on Amazon's website, if you hover your mouse just right here on the title tab, or on the tab, you see it says Amazon.com, spend less, smile more. Now in the code, that's what we see here, right? So the title, the title that you see here, right, it appears in a title tag. So I'm gonna just copy what I see there, copy, uh, go to my code. I'm just gonna paste it there for now. I'm going to take out this information and leave the title tag. So the title tag, a lot of tags in HTML are, look very similar to the title tag. Um, you're going to see that, if I just space this out, you're going to see that um, most of the tag, actually, literally all the tags, always start out with this symbol. Right, you can call this a less than symbol or a left pointing arrow. I'll say left, I'll say a less than symbol. So there's a less than symbol here and there is a greater than symbol. Now you notice that you have two tags, like a pair of tags, right? Let me move this down here just to make things less confusing. So the tags always appear in pairs, right? So a tag is less than uh, some characters here and the greater than symbol makes a tag. So this is a tag. So right now we have two tags on this page, right? HTML tags always come in pairs. This tag is called the title tag just like we saw on the Amazon uh, web page, 
the job of the title tag is to place a title on the tab, right? The job of the title tag is to place a title right there on the tab. You know what you need? What you need? A, what you need a title for? I mean, if you have a lot of tabs open, it helps you. If I let's say I go to YouTube, for example, I go to YouTube, right? It helps you to know what tabs you have open, right? That kind of makes sense. So I know I have YouTube here, I have Amazon here, I have my search here. If I go to, let's say, um, McDonald's, for example. So now, you know, now I know that I have, you know, I know YouTube is open, McDonald's is open, Amazon is open, right? So that's what that is useful for. All right, so like I said, the, a lot of HTML tags come in pairs, right, pairs. The difference, if you notice, the difference between these two tags is, this is the opening tag, right? We refer to this as the opening tag, and we refer to the other one as the closing tag closing tag. Um, the best way for you to get this HTML thing and this coding thing is for you to type what I'm typing, right? So you listen for a little bit, you type it. Um, it's not like a lecture where you just listen, listen for an hour and that's it. No. You've got to type as you type you get comfortable and it kind of, you know, you get more understanding of how the code works. All right, so you're gonna type everything that, that you type, that we type on the screen. That's how you learn uh, HTML and web design. This is just, uh, you know, to explain, I'm gonna remove this part in a second. But, so this part here is your opening tag and this is your closing tag. Your closing tag has a forward slash, right? Just right after your less than character, right? So I'm gonna take this out, take this out. So this is your opening tag, this is your closing tag. Most tags appear this way. In fact, I'm gonna, um, also, I do a lot of copy and paste. Copy and paste is control C, and then control V is to paste. So control C, C for Charlie, and V for Victor. So, you know, you kind of move faster that way. Of course, you can also copy by right-clicking, copy, and you can paste by right-clicking, paste, all right? So here, a few, a few um, tags you're gonna notice as we go along, there's the head tag, uh, there's the um, body tag, body tag, right? These are a few tags you're gonna notice um, as we keep going, all right? And they all have different uses, different purposes on your website, all right? So let's just, let's get started and let's start creating a very simple, um, not too complex web page. So let me take this out. When you start out your web page, your pe web page has a basic structure, all right? There's a basic structure to your web page. And this is how we lay it out. We start out with HTML HTML tag, and you close with a HTML tag. So the, the first tags that appear or that should appear on your page is the HTML tag, right? That's how we start it out. Now, as we keep going, I want you to think about a sandwich right? The sandwich principle. What do I mean? So let's, let's do a search for a sandwich, right? So you see what I mean? All right. 
So, well, this might make you very hungry right now, but let's say here's a sandwich, right? Here's a sandwich. We notice that we have the top bun or the bread at the top here, and at the bottom, we also have the bread. So you have the top bread and the bottom bread. Now, right inside here, you have all the juicy stuff that makes you like really hungry right now. Well, if you're hungry right now, take a few minutes, go eat and come back, <laughs> all right? So that's a sandwich, okay? The very top here has the top uh, bun, and the bottom has a bun. And right inside there, you have all the juicy stuff. So how does this work with our code? Well, our code is going to be like a sandwich, all right? Usually your tags are like joined together, but you can open them up here by breaking them apart. And right in here, you're going to have a lot of stuff that goes in there. That's what I mean by sandwich, right? So let's say this is your top, uh, your opening tag, and this is your closing tag right in the middle it's going to be a lot of stuff coming in there so think about a sandwich so what goes in here like i said we're trying to set up a web page and it has some some uh there's a structure for your web page so let's see what goes here we have a few sections here basically two sections We have the head section and we have the body section. Now I'm going to hit the tab key, right? The tab key on your keyboard is like top left hand corner of your keyboard. You're going to see the tab key. So when you hit the tab, it indents or pushes the code to the right. We do that, if you notice uh, several websites or you know, tutorials on web design, you might notice that kind of um, setup. It just makes your code easier to read and also the way the code flows. So when a piece of code is tabbed, it kind of tells you in your mind that code is inside, right, um, some tags. So here is your opening tag, and you can tell that these two lines of code are inside, so to speak, your HTML tag, all right? So when you tab, it kind of you know, helps you understand that. So this is, this is, believe it or not, this is the structure of a HTML page. This is all you need there to start up, right? Like to set it up. You have the HTML code, the HTML tags, you have the head tags and you have the body tags. Those are the main sections of a web page, the main sections. Now, the way we do this, uh, we avoid laying out all our code horizontally. Here's what I mean. If I lay out all this code horizontally, I mean, the code is gonna work. When we start working on it now, you're gonna see it works, but it's going to be so hard to manage this code because everything is going to start flowing, you know, horizontally to the right. Now, you know that when you look at a web page, mostly you scroll up and down or even on your phone, you scroll up and down, not left to right. Um, so, so we kind of set up our code. I'm going to undo now just to get back to where I was. So we tended to set up our code going vertically, right? Not horizontally, as much as possible. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna um, kind of like separate the tags here. So generally in your head tag, remember again the sandwich, you're gonna have a lot of stuff in the head tag here, you're gonna have a lot of stuff in the body tag here. And so this is how you set up your you know, the back end of your code. You have the HTML tag to start. You have the HTML tag to end it. You have the head tag here, 
the head or the head section and the body section. All right. So before we go too far, um, let's save this work and let's see how we can view our code so far um, in a web browser. So it's always a good idea for you to split your, if you can, to split your, kind of like split, split your page, right? I recommend it. So you split your page so you can see the web browser to the right side and your code to the left side. So split your, split your screen so that your code is here to the left and your web browser is on the right side. So I'm just going to get a new, I'm just going to kind of, I don't need all these guys here. I'm just going to close all this for now, close all this. I'm just going to go with a blank page, all right? I, I don't need this to, this is where we did the search for text editor. So I'm all set with that. So let's save this code. Um, you type your code in a text editor and you go to a web browser to get the code to show, right? So let's see how that works. So on your text editor, look for file, save as, save as, and you can save your code literally anywhere, but just, just to keep things simple, I'm going to go to desktop and I'm going to create a new folder. Just click on new folder and just say um, web design. Just going to call it web design uh, one because I have a lot of web design folders here. I'm just going to say web design one. I'm going to open that folder. Uh, you might want to call yours web class, HTML class, whatever you want, but just make sure you give it a name that you recognize and you can find it because you're going to need to find where you saved your files you know, regularly. Let's just call this lesson one dot HTML. Um, now, let me just talk about this for a second. Dot HTML, let me open up this here, use this to explain. Uh, so let's say we have, we have a few files. You don't have to type this, just trying to explain something here dot html right uh this is what we call file extensions file extensions right file extensions so the part after the after your name so let's say you're you know you have a you know a school document or you have an assignment called project one dot html right the dot html is the file extension you can also have project one dot d o c x you can have uh, project one dot p d f you can have project one dot um, m p three project one dot j p g right now you may not always see um this extensions on your computer, but it's something we should be familiar with because for a file to open up in a program, it needs to have an extension. That is, the program needs to know what kind of file is this? You know, the computer needs to know what kind of file is, is this and what program or what software do we need to open up that file? So a, a file like project1.jpg is a picture, right? It's a picture. Um, so it's going to have a .jpg. If I, I can't double click on this. I'm just trying to explain to you. But if I was able to double click on this file, it will open up in a, you know, graphic program, you know, where you see your pictures. If I was able to open up this file, it will be a um, audio file, right? an audio file, MP3. This is a PDF file. This is a Microsoft Word document. And this is a HTML file, right? So HTML files, actually, uh, this extension could be HTM or HTML. 
right? We can use, H I, I tend to use HTM a lot, but .htm or .html is going to tell the computer to open up that file in a web browser. So like I said, this file is going to open up in a picture program, in a photo, maybe your photos or something. This is going to open up uh, like a you know, music player or something like that. This is a PDF. This is a Microsoft Word document. A file with an extension of .html or .htm is always going to open up in your web browser. All right, so file extensions. So when you give your file a name, make sure there are no spaces. That's kind of, you know, uh, when you deal with web files, you want to avoid spaces. Uh, typically, you're going to say less than one space, less than space one dot HTML, but try to avoid spaces, right? When you name your file, no matter how long the name is, just no spaces. So, like I said, you can use .html or .htm when you name your web files. The important thing is to be consistent. If you're going to be .html, you've got to be .html all the time. If you're going to be .htm, you've got to be .htm all the time. All right, so I'm going to stick with .htm, just a personal preference, all right? All right, so I'm going to save this file in the folder that I created, Web Design One. Make sure you save yours in your folder. I'm going to hit save. All right. Now, go to your folders. If you're on a Mac, look for your folder, the same thing. You know, there's really not much difference here. So I'm going to open my folders here at the bottom of my screen and go to my desktop and look for my Web Design One. Here's my Web Design One. Double click on it move that uh, whole box down a little bit. And here's my lesson one. So I'm just gonna click on this file and drag it and drop it on this blank browser here. Just drop it there. That's all you need to do, right? I mean, you could also double click it. If I double clicked it, it's gonna open up kind of like a new, um, a new tab, all right? So, for example, if I close if I close this web browser and I double click on this, now it's gonna open up, you know, a new web browser. So so you can drag it if your web browser is open is already open, just drag the file. If it is not open, double click the file and open it up. The important thing is once you open up your web browser, leave it open for as long as we're working. All right? You don't need to be opening and closing it. Every time we update this code, right, we update the code, it's going to be reflected here. Right now, all you see is this question marks because we put them here, right? Um, so once you have this set up anyway, let's just keep going. You're going to see how things change. All right, so kind of like the Amazon page, right here, right inside your head tag is where we place the title tag. I'm just gonna tab it a little bit here. Like I said, when you tab your line of code, it tells you that that line of code is inside, right, um, you know, a pair of tags. Think about the sandwich again, sandwich, right? So title here. So the opening title tag and the closing title tag. Now notice uh, right here in the web browser that, you know, this is just like your file and this doesn't really tell you anything. So we're gonna give it a title here and say, let's just call it Boston Celtics, right? Boston Celtics. Let me just expand that a little bit. All right. So we're gonna call that Boston Celtics in the title. Now I'm gonna save, right? I can hit the save button if you have one in your web browser or go to file and hit save, okay? Now once you save, come back here to your web browser and just hit this refresh button here or look for the refresh button or hit control five, sorry, hit F5 on your keyboard. So if you find the refresh button, 
or F5 on your keyboard does the same job. So refresh. Now notice that my tab here has now changed to Boston Celtics. Just like we found on the Amazon page when we did the um, view source. All right. So whatever title is going to appear in your tab has to be in the title tag, which goes um, right here in the head section of your HTML code. Right. You can, you, I mean, you can type anything you want to type there. Let's say Boston Celtics, I don't know, basketball, something like that. If you want to see the changes in the web browser, always remember to save, save your file. So I'm just going to click this button here, go here, refresh the page, and you can see that my title on the tab is going to tell me whatever it is that I have here. All right. So if you're not typing yet, uh, you want to stop this right now, maybe rewind a little bit and type everything we have, right? So you know how we got to this point, okay? That is how you gradually start getting, you know, a, an understanding of, you know, how code works. Like I said, you might have some experience or you have zero experience, doesn't matter. You're going to get everything you need to get in this class, right? So that's how we set up the title for our web page. It can be whatever. Um, I mean, you can even have a couple of emojis there if you want, right? Like, I'm going to put a what? Smiley face, save, refresh the page. And you can see my smiley face there. Why would you want to have a smiley face? I don't know. Well, you can do it. No, always recommended, but you know, you have the flexibility. Basically, um, the title should be about whatever is on that web page. All right, whatever is on that web page, not just for the fun of it. You don't just type whatever you like there. You type something. It's like a book, right? Every book has a title for the book, and the chapters have titles. So you know what chapter you're at. So when you design your web page, for every different section of your web page, uh, you got to have a title. For example, if I go to this website, um, let's say I go to this website here. I'm just going to open it up completely. Now, right now, you see that we're on the home tab. If I place my mouse here, it says home. McCormick Bowers Associates, right? If I go to services, it says right here, our services, McCormick Bowers Associates. If I go to values, whatever page I'm on, it's going to be reflected um, in the tab. So it gives you an idea. If you have many different websites open, it tells you, you know, what you have open here. That's the purpose right or that's the that's the i guess that's the reason why you need to put a a title if you don't have a title you're just going to say it might just be blank it makes no sense right for example if i take out the title that we had before let's just say i say no title here and i say refresh the page now there's no title so if somebody is view, viewing your web page they're not going to know what it is you have there that's going to be very confusing. It's like having a, a book with no page numbers or page titles. Makes no sense. So let's put it back there. Just going to hit undo. So that's our title. Save. Go back here, refresh the page, and that's your title. Okay. I'm just going to take out this emoji there. We really don't, we really don't need it there. I just put it there just to, you know get you to relax a little bit because it can be quite tense when you're coding. So just to get you to relax. All right. So let me save this here and refresh the page. And now you can see that all we have is a Boston Celtics basketball. Now we're going to have a few more 
items come into the head section, but let's go into the body section. The body section is where you put stuff that you want to show, you know, in the main browser. You put everything in the body section, okay? So right now you see we have this question marks. We're gonna take that out, save, refresh the page. Now we've got nothing. So let's, um, let's add some information here. So let's do a search. Uh, let's, let's kind of go to, let's go to Wikipedia or let's just do a search for Boston Celtics. How about that? Just do a search for Boston Celtics. Like I said, we're going to do a lot of searching online for information. So uh, let's, let's go to the Wiki, Wikipedia page here. So let's just grab, I don't know, the first, say the first two paragraphs, just highlight everything with your mouse, the first two paragraphs there, and then hit Control C on your keyboard or right click on the blue selection and click on copy. We just need to uh, copy some of that information and use in our code. Excuse me, put myself a bit more comfortable here. All right. So copy that, uh, copy that, you know, what we just copied here, and then come back in here and place your mouse right there on line seven, right, and just hit paste, paste. Just hit save right away and refresh your page. The page might look something like this, right? Just a bunch of text you know, just right there, right? So just do that. And now let's, let's try to organize what we have right now, right? Let's, let's make it neat. Okay, so first thing we want to do is let's say we want to put a title. We want the Boston Celtics to be the main title of this web page, not the tab now, that's different, just the page itself. You know, when you're, when you're, you're viewing the web page itself, all right? So right here, here's a few new tags for you to see. There's the H1 tag, H1. Just gonna hit enter. So type H1. Now you notice that uh, before we go ahead, all my tags here seem to be in lowercase. Well, that's how, that's the convention. That's how we do it in web design, right? We type our tags in lowercase. Now, if you put in uppercase, it's still going to work. But usually, uh, the convention is to set your preferences. And when you type your, your text editor preferences, and when you type, is to type all your tags in lowercase. That's just how we do it. If you type it in uppercase, it will still work, but it might look weird. Okay. So type, uh, uh, just place the opening and closing H1 tags around the Boston Celtics here and save. Every time you make a change in your code, save, refresh it in the browser. Now, when you refresh your browser, you notice you have the Boston Celtics uh, quite big and bold here, right? Quite big and bold. That is what the H1 tag does. Now, let's see what happens here. The H1 has six different types of H1, of H tag. The H there, this H stands for heading, right? Like the heading, like the level one heading, or in terms of size, the biggest in terms of size. So see what happens here. I'm gonna copy this, Control C. I'm gonna paste it uh, about six times. I'm gonna change this to H2, H2, H3, H3, H4,
and H6. So H1 is, well, let me save it and refresh the page so you see what it does. All right, look at that. So in terms of size or the size of your heading or you know, maybe you want a heading on your web page, H1 is the, um, it's gonna be the biggest in terms of size, the biggest size of a heading. And H6 is gonna be the smallest, this is H6 right here. So depending on what you're doing on your web page and what you wanna emphasize, what you want to be big or stuff like that, you can choose an appropriate H heading, H1, H2, H3, H4. Um, actually, I'll say that H1 to H3 are probably the most common, but if you need to use H4, 5, and 6, you're free to do so, but that's, the, uh, that's how far it goes, H1 to H6. All right, so you got that. So I'm just going to take this out and leave it at H, uh, leave it at H1. Save. Refresh the page. All right. Now let's move on and do a little bit more. So let's say we want to split all this text here into into three paragraphs or two paragraphs, right? You know, like the paragraphs you have, um, you know, in a Word document. So right here, how do you do that? Your, your, your paragraphs, you create paragraphs using the P tag, the paragraph tag, right? The paragraph tag. So place an opening, that's an opening tag. Now just come down a few lines here. It doesn't have to be in any particular place. Okay, right here we have a, a period. So put a closing paragraph tag and save the page. Save, refresh. So once you refresh, you notice that it, it breaks here, right? Because we have the P tag. Notice the break. All right, so let's, we want to create three paragraphs, so I'm just going to hit enter here just to make, you know, you want to, you want to make your code as, as neat as possible, okay? You don't want everything to be just clustered together or jammed together. So place another P tag here. Come down a few lines. Well, we have another period, so it can always be anywhere. You know, depends on how you want to set up your, you can have, you know, three paragraphs, four paragraphs, depending on how you're designing your web page. We just happen to have, you know, some periods and stuff like that here. So save the page, refresh, and that's our second part. I think we can actually make four paragraphs here. So I'm gonna make another P, P tag here, come down a few lines, just gonna come here, uh, save, go here, refresh, and now we have one more paragraph here. And save, refresh. All right, so we have four paragraphs. If I expand my page, yours might look like this, four paragraphs. All right, so let's give this paragraph some headings, right? Like, or should I say subheadings or subtitles? So let's go back up here and right here, just before, just before the P tag, let's use now a H3, how about that? A H3 heading, opening and closing H3 tags. Just give it a random title. I'm just gonna give this a title here. I don't know, founded in 1986. Just copy that and put it right here, paste and save, refresh the page. And that's my subtitle for, or I don't know, let me just say uh, team based in Boston, right here. Refresh the page, all right. So that's my first subtitle for my first paragraph, okay? 
So we need a we need a paragraph for each of the other title. Uh, we need a title for each of the other paragraphs. So we have three more paragraphs. So let's create three more titles or subtitles. Sometimes it's easier to copy and paste, and then you edit. That way you don't make a lot of mistakes, and you don't have to retype everything. So paste, and let's just grab another random title here. Let's say, um, say most successful basketball team in NBA. All right. Or should we say one of, right? One of. But just do random stuff right now. So, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. So here's our first paragraph with a subtitle. Here's our second paragraph with a subtitle. We, have, we need two more. So like I said, you might want to copy and paste. That way you move faster and you make maybe less mistakes. Uh, Larry Bird, Celtic star, Larry Bird. Copy, paste that here. Refresh. Now you've got three paragraphs, and then we need one more. So, uh, we have three paragraphs, three titles, subtitles, so we need one more for the bottom here. So I can just type that here, or copy and paste, H3. So I need another title. Let's just say Bill Russell. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just put it there, whatever it is. So if you look at this now, we have it's a very basic web page, right? A very basic web page. Uh, let's add something else here. So go right here on line eight and put a HR tag. Now, we said before that a lot of tags in HTML have pairs. There's an opening tag and a closing tag, but not all. Some of those tags are just single tags, just by themselves, no pairs. So like the HR tag, let me save and what does the HR tag do? Well, save it and refresh the page and you see what it does. The HR tag gives you a horizontal line, a horizontal line right there. It goes from the left all the way to the right, a horizontal line. Okay, so we have a basic web page here, just like we did with the Amazon web page. If you right click any blank space here, you and go to view page source, you can see that you have a page source. Everything you type there, of course, you can't edit it. You can't edit; it doesn't allow you. But you can see all your all your code there, right? So, um, HTML code is the back end or the basis for any web page. There's always code if you view the page source. And in fact, amongst web designers, um, we don't believe that anybody owns code, right? So you can always go to any website and, you know, use, you know, a little bit, a little snippet of code. You don't have... I'm not talking about using an entire code for your web page, but you know, you go on, you go and do a search online and you find some code that may work with your website. It's perfectly fine for you to copy, you know, a little bit of code on a different website and use it in your code. That works. That happens all the time. But you don't want to copy, for example, another student's work, like 
100% and say, that's my work. Then that's what we call plagiarism, okay? And that's a, that's, that's, that's a violation of, of, you know, the college policy. You never want to plagiarize anybody's work. But in web design, like I said, you can always copy snippets of code to add to your code, but not the entire thing where you say, I did this website, but you didn't. You just copied everything, okay? So let's close this and go back. So that's our simple web page, uh, just a title and a few paragraphs for now. Let's add a couple more things to this web page. Let's say we want to put a picture there, right? Let's look for a picture of the Boston Celtics and let's add it here. Like I said, we're going to do a lot of searching online. So let's go here and let's just go back here and go to images. So let's look for any, any image here. You can grab an image of um, um, Jaden Brown and um, Jason Tatum here. Now, it's a little bit tricky when you're using online pictures, there's a way to use the picture. Before we use pictures, first of all, you should know that every item you find online is basically copyrighted. You can see right here, it says images may be subject to copyright. That is, it belongs to somebody else. So you can just grab any picture you like or any photo you like online and just go use it. But, well, there are two sides to that, what I just said. If you're doing your school work, you're free to use whatever you find, whatever you like in your school work. Find an image using your school work, your assignments, submit it. In this course or any course, right? Uh, if your professor asks you to, you know, to paste the link or document the source of that picture or that information, then you do that. Uh, but in this class, you don't have to, you don't necessarily have to say, this is where I got it from. You're free to use any picture you find in your website. Now, you're going to have a problem if you decide to go commercial. So let's say, you know, you're, you're done with this course and your, you know, your, your skills in HTML are like ex excellent. And you have a client that says, well, can you build me a website? Now it's all commercial, right? People are paying you money and stuff like that. Well, if you go online and just grab any picture and use it on that website commercially, then it's a violation of copyright. So your client should give you pictures or you can go online and find a whole lot of places where you can buy pictures or photos, right? For your commercial website. But for educational purposes, you're free to use whatever image you find that fits the website you're building, okay? All right, so let's keep going. So once you find an image, uh, now, some of these images are thumbnails. They're like smaller sizes, so they're not the original size. To, find, to see the original size, once you find the picture you want, right-click on that picture and go to Open Image in New Tab right there. It's going to open a new tab, and now you have your picture. Now, for you to be perfectly sure that that picture is going to work, it has to have, you know, like we said before, it has to have a the JPG extension, or it has to have a, uh, what now, the PNG, or usually those are the good ones, the GIF, sometimes you, you, you use a GIF um, picture. So right here, if I go all the way to the end, you see right here, you go to the very end of that um, web address, it says .jp, so I can tell that that picture is fine to use. So you always want to be sure because if it's not a JPEG or a PNG, you know, the picture might start acting funny and, you know, it might show you the picture and then when you, you know, in some other situation, the picture doesn't appear, all kinds of stuff goes on. So highlight the whole link 
the whole address there, right click and copy it, okay? There are a few ways uh, to place a picture on your website. This is what we call um, an absolute link. Uh, let's just keep going. So copy that address there, go back to your code. I'm just gonna minimize this page again. Go back to your code. And let's look at you know a little bit more uh, you know, advanced HTML code a little bit. So we want the picture to appear just before this title, the team based in Boston. So let's go right here, right under the line nine, just below the um, HR tag. So type this code here. This is an image tag. The image tag is also a single tag. Doesn't have a pair, all right? But the image tag has what we call attributes. This word, attributes. Attributes are basically, um, you know, characteristics of an item, of an object. Like you can have a co color attribute, a size attribute, things like that. Um, you know, dimensions. So attributes, things that describe an item or an object. You say, that guy is tall, right? Um, that bottle is round. Round bottle? Maybe the ball is round, right? Attributes, things that describe, you know, characteristics of an item. So, well, we have attributes also in HTML. So we want to use an attribute here called SRC, SRC stands for source. That is, where is this image coming from? Source. So we write SRC for short. Like I said, depending on your code editor, you might have different color combinations in your code. I have the red showing up now and my, and so you got to type your uh, double quotation marks, right? So every time you use a, an attribute, you write source equals you can use a single or a double quotation mark. Um, so I'm gonna use a double quotation mark and I'm gonna paste the address that I saw here, right? You copied it already, so you should have that. And just paste it right here, paste. Now it looks like a very long uh, piece of code, but don't worry about it, just stick it in there. You might find a picture that you know has a shorter link, sort of, right? So it doesn't matter, just put it there. Your extension has to be in there, the whole thing. Just make sure you copy everything from your address bar, right? Okay. So once you have that correct, let me expand this a little bit. So yours might, you know, depending on how your, the width of your code, it might, you know, that's how it looks like. So should be close to what I have. So save, go here to your web page and refresh the page. Right. If I expand my page, you can see that I have the image right there. Right. That's your code. You type your image tag. Let me expand this code page here. You type your image tag space. You type source SRC equals. You place your uh, your quotation mark. You have two quotation marks. This one to start and this to end it. Right and then you paste uh, the URL, the address in there. So save that page and yours, yours should look, depending on your picture, you might have the same picture here or a different picture, right? Now, this picture is a little bit too big for my web page. So let's add some, some other attributes that's gonna help us, you know, adjust the size of that picture. So I'm just gonna go in here. Uh, so just right there, I'm gonna say width equals, right, you gotta space out your attributes. So width, and then I'm gonna put a height. Well, actually I don't need the height, let me just say width, right? Just gonna put a width attribute there. So width, um, let's just go with, I don't know, let's just say 200. PX, PX stands for pixels, 
Pixels, P-I-X-E-L-S, Pixels, P-X. Pixels are how we, they're the unit of measurement on a website, right? Just like you have inches, you have millimeters, centimeters. On the road, you have miles per hour, kilometers per hour, stuff like that, right? So on a web page, we measure in pixels, PX. So let's try 200 PX there, save and refresh, see how, what that looks like. Okay. Well, now it looks a bit too small, so let me increase that a little bit here. Let's say 400 pixels, save. Okay, that looks fine. 400 PX. So let's say I'm gonna put one more picture here, right? Let's say down here, I'm gonna put another picture. So let's just go back here, look for Another picture of the of the Celtics here. Well, here is um, Larry Bird. So, I mean, you can always get anything you want. You can even decide to grab the logo. So I'm going to grab the logo here. Maybe this logo looks nice. Remember to right click so you can see the full. You always got to see the full image by itself in the browser, right? Don't grab an image here and save this file. If you say save as or something, that's not gonna work. You don't have the full image. So make sure you have the full image. Once you see it, you look in the address bar, you see your extension, now you can grab that. So copy that, uh, minimize the page, go back to your code, and uh, you gotta say, well, where do I wanna place this? Let's just say we wanna place it, um, You know, maybe at the bottom here, after Celtic star, you know, just go down here. I'm just gonna put it right here. So again, um, IMG. Actually, you know what? Here's the best way to do this. Just copy what you did before. You could always type the whole thing, but sometimes that just takes too long and you wanna be consistent. So, so copy the whole image you did before the complete thing, copy, come where you want to decide where you want to put it, and then paste. If you save that file and refresh the page, you have the same image, right? So now go to the image, to the new image you want, highlight the whole thing, copy it, and now all you need to do is just replace that here. Replace this, paste with your new image. So some, um, what we call absolute links, an absolute link basically points directly to the web page, right? So this image is here, directly points to where the image was found. The problem is, if the guy who put this picture here takes it out, takes it down, then your picture here is gonna be blank. So we have two ways of including a, an image on our website. Uh, absolutely, that's directly or where we save the page to our personal local folder. We'll get to that in a second. So let's save this here. Go here and just basically refresh the page. And now you've got your second picture, right? That's it right there. So you've got your Celtics here and you've got your image here. All right. Now let's say we want to add one more picture. Um, and let's do that differently, right? Not not the direct link this time. So let's go back here and let's say we want to grab um, this picture of uh, Marco Smart here, right? Same thing. Right click, open the image in a new tab. Now you've got to save here, right? Right click and save image as. Of course, first of all. You gotta verify that it's a JPEG. Well, this doesn't really show me the JPEG. Uh, it doesn't show it at the end. Oh, actually it's right here. Sometimes they add some other stuff. So right here it says JPEG. So that's, I can use that picture. So I'm gonna save this picture now. Now I wanna save this picture on my local computer. Remember, you can do that 
because it's a school project. If this was a commercial project, you got to buy your pictures or get your clients to send you some pictures. So save image as, then go to that folder that you created originally. So your desktop or wherever you saved it, my, my folder was right here, Web Design one And now this name here is a bit too long. So I'm just gonna call it Marcus Smart dot JPG, right? I'm just gonna copy the name because I'm gonna need to write this name exactly how it is. I'm just gonna copy that and save it. So if you verify, look in your folder, right? You can see that, that uh, you should see that you have that um, image right there, right? The Marcos Smart. Now, if you're using Edit Plus, um, you might see that you have a .bak file, or even your own text editor might have that. that a file with a .bak extension just means a backup file. It's, it's not really useful. Well, it's useful if you lose the original file for some reason, but um, you can just ignore it, right? So I don't, so we should have, technically you should have your image file and the lesson1.html file, okay? So once that is there, let's continue with our code. Minimize this page here. All right, so we're gonna place Marcos Smart somewhere else um, here. So let's say we're gonna put him at the bottom of the page. So right here. So um, IMG, oops. IMG source equals, all right, so now the source is going to be different. Before we did a direct link, right? We just, you know, pasted the link to the website where we found the picture. Or like I said, if the owner, the original owner of that picture takes it off the website, then it's not gonna show on your website. So if you wanna be more in control of your pictures, so we're just gonna, I'm just gonna paste that file that I saved, remember? Here's the file that I saved, or the picture, right? That's it right there. So it has to be the same name, right? Marco, make sure it's saved in the same folder as your lesson one, or else you might have some problems. It's not gonna show up correctly. All right, so that's my picture there, and I'm gonna close this box. So. That's your source. Uh, depending on the size of the picture, you can always add the um, attributes with the width and stuff like that. But let me save it now and see what happens. So refresh the page and that's my picture, right? So if for whatever happens, now I'm, in, I'm more in control of this picture, right? Because it's saved on my local files. Now, if I want to, you know, reduce the size like the other, same thing. Just go here. You can always add your attributes actually to any part of your code. So like this, we. Okay, so right there. So again, I'm going to say 300 PX. Save. Refresh the page. And that's my picture. Right, so, so we have a basic web page, um, you know, with a title, horizontal line, a few pictures, and a few paragraphs and sub headings, right? So if you haven't typed this code, um, you probably want to type this code so you, you know, you start getting familiar with how web pages are, are built and the different uh, kind of requirements to help you set up your web page correctly, right? That's the end of this lesson. I uh, will continue developing this web page in the next lesson.